On today's episode of the Locked On Giants podcast, we're going to take a look at the New York Giants core as we set the stage for what their needs really are in the upcoming draft that's coming your way next on the Locked On Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Lock on Giants podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lock on today to get started. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Lock on Giants podcast, part of the Lock on Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Chena P. Train credentialed member of the New York Giants media for Locked On, as well as for Giants Country over on the Fan Nation Network. And a special welcome on in to my Blue Crew community members, to my everydayers, to my newcomers and everybody in between. You're all appreciated and loved. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us here on the Locked On Giants podcast. And if for those of you watching on YouTube, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Click that little notification bell so that you get notified every time I post new content. And if you don't mind, click and like the video. Give it a thumbs up. That would be appreciated. So on today's Locked on Giants podcast, we're going to take a look, a deep look at the state of the New York Giants core. Now, this is going to be important, I think, because this is going to help set the stage for potential draft needs. So I'm going to go position by position and kind of give a little ranking and discuss whether I think the position group is set or whether it still needs some additional depth. Then we're going to take a look at the age-old question for the draft. Should the Giants trade back in this year's draft? I'm going to give you some thoughts on what I think they should do and why they should do it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to lead up to segment three, which is my can't miss perfect three round New York Giants mock draft. I ran it on Pro Football Focus's simulator, uh, got a little creative with it. And uh, spoiler alert, the PFF simulator gave me an A plus for this draft. So, I'm going to unveil that for you in segment three. That's our agenda for today. Again, welcome on in to Locked on Giants. Let's get started. All right, let's talk about the state of the New York Giants core. Now, when you look at various teams, obviously, you know, some teams are a little stronger than others in terms of the core foundation that they have. And in looking at the Giants foundation, I, I just find that there's a lot of areas where they still need some depth where if you were to say to me, do you believe that they're strong enough to, you know, for, for the future, I would probably tell you no. So I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to start with the offense and I'm going to start with the offensive line. I think other than for Andrew Thomas and John Michael Schmitz, two guys out of the starting five, still some question marks here. Now I know the Giants added some veterans. They should make a difference, these veterans. But we have said this before about the offensive line, that the offensive line was, you know, we thought in the past years was fixed only to find out that it wasn't fixed. So, you know, this offensive line, obviously it's all contingent on what happens on with Evan Neal. That would certainly help. You know, can they get solid play out of John Runyon Jr. and Jermaine Illuminor? Um, what's going to happen with the depth behind them? But right now, I don't know that I would say that that offensive line is – a strength of the team. I don't think it's a total weakness. I think it's one of those situations where it's pending to be determined because we've been fooled before by the offensive line. I ain't going to get fooled again. I want to see it. All right. I'm not going to go by what's on, um, on paper, the wide receiver core, despite the fact that the giants don't have a number one receiver. I think this is a pretty strong core that the giants have with Darius Slayton, Jalen Hyatt, and Wandale Robinson. I do think, you know, a number one receiver will take what is a very good receiver core to great status. So I would say on the offense, if you're looking for the strongest unit, I would say the receiver core is probably it. They, they are the hands down the, the strongest unit. Tight ends. Um, 
regardless of what happens with Darren Waller, I think this unit needs a good athletic pass catcher. You know, I'm not so sure Daniel Bellinger is that guy. I mean, he's a good pass catcher, but if you're talking about athleticism, probably not as athletic as, um, as Waller is, as a healthy Waller is. And that's the problem with Waller. He can't stay on the field. So, you know, you throw that in with the fact that he's still trying to make up his mind whether or not to retire, which hopefully he does soon, by the way, like preferably before April 15th when they open up the offseason program. And I just think tight end is still a sneaky need, even though they signed all these other guys who are primarily blockers, the man hurts is the stalls and so forth. Quarterback. That's a position I think that is in flux. I know the giants are still high on Daniel Jones. I can't honestly say I share that opinion and not just because you know, Jones was shell shocked last year, which I think we can all agree he was, but his injury history for me is the biggest problem. And, you know, it's no surprise that the Giants, they've been doing heavy due diligence on quarterbacks. You know, everybody talks about, oh, well, they, they look at every position every year. The Giants have really been knee deep in quarterbacks. They know that this is a deep class coming up in the draft, historically deep. They know that next year's class isn't as deep. And also, oh, by the way, you don't want to be drafting in the top six again next year. So if you're going to get a quarterback, get him now, if you if need be. It's a good problem to have because, you know, if the kid sits for a year, if Daniel Jones comes back healthy and balls out and stays healthy, that's a good problem to have, ladies and gentlemen, as opposed to skipping a quarterback and saying, oh, we'll roll with Daniel Jones. And then God forbid the kid gets hurt again. God forbid he suffers another neck injury. And now he is, he's useless. You know, he has to retire. So I do think the Giants will, will strengthen the quarterback position in the draft. But right now, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's a strong position on this team at all. Same thing for running back. All right. The loss of Saquon Barkley, even though Barkley was starting to decline a little bit in his performance, he was still better than I think what they have right now in terms of depth. You know, they Devin Singletary is, a, you know, statistically speaking, is maybe on par with what the Giants have gotten with Barkley, but he's not a high-volume type of guy. Beyond him, you know, you have Eric Gray, who I we didn't see a whole lot of last year, so I don't know that we can say that Eric Gray is, is a strength right now. And then you've got just Sean Corbin and a couple of other guys. I, I just don't feel that the running back position is as strong in terms of, of the uh, core. So really the, the strongest position, again, to recap on offense is receiver. Offense line, maybe you can make a case for that being the second strongest, but quarterback, tight end, running back, they got to they gotta beef that up. And I mentioned this again because this is going to lead up to eventually the draft needs. But anyway, let's talk about the defense real quick. Defensive line, I do believe they're solid there. Um, do I think that that's the strongest unit on the team? No. I think the inside linebacker group is the strongest on the team right now. You know, Bobby O'Karake, Micah McFadden, um, I think Darian Beavers, if he's healthy, he can, you know, give them some depth there. I, so I'm going to give the nod to the to the inside linebacker group. The defensive line is probably the second strongest unit. Um, I obviously Dexter Lawrence. I mean, what what else can you say about Dexter Lawrence? Um, Raheem, Raheem Nunes Rocha is more of a, a run stopper than an edge, you know, a pass rusher. But you know, you're going to see Brian Burns, who's technically part of the outside linebacker group. He'll probably rush a few times with his hand down in the dirt. I would think so. The defensive front overall, much better, I think, uh, in terms of the strength. The secondary to me, other than for Deontay Banks, I've got questions about the secondary. Who's cornerback two? We still don't know. The Giants have tried to get a cornerback two in free agency and haven't had any luck. The safeties, you know, right now the projected safeties are Jason Pinnock and Dane Belton. You know, what do they really have in those guys? You know, I think, you know, Ideally, they'd like to maybe add some more depth. I know they signed Jalen Mills, but I think Mills is only signed to a one-year deal, so we're not talking for the long term. So a lot of holes that still need to be filled, I think, or proven to be you know stronger than what they appear to be on paper. A lot of work still to be done, which is why I keep saying that I don't believe the Giants are going to um, are, are going to push 
for a deep playoff spot this year. You know, they might get to the playoffs. They might not. I'll set up for them being better against NFC East opponents and for them having a better record in 2024. All right, coming up next, should the Giants trade back in the first round? I'll give you my thoughts on that right after this. Hey, Giant fans, say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trainer. Happy Friday, by the way, to everybody. We made it through another week. That means the next several weeks, you know, going to be kind of quiet a little bit. You know, you're going to have the remaining um, pro days. You're going to have the draft rumors picking up. And uh, over on Giants Country on SI, we are going to continue to give you uh, draft coverage of the different prospects. What we do over on Giants Country is we kind of give you the prospects that we think are best fits for the Giants. So if you want to check that out, you can go to uh, si.com slash NFL slash Giants. Okay, so uh, hopefully you'll check that out. And of course, we are still five days a week here on the Locked on Giants podcast. So we'll be having more content. I know some of you reached out and asked me about certain guests so, yes, I will look to get a guest on the show again next week. Um, we'll just try and fill up the program until we get to the draft, which will be here before we know it. It's less than a month. Yay. Can't wait. That means the end of mock draft season. But anyway, before we get there, should the Giants trade back in the first round? Now, I think if the Giants are going to make a trade, a couple things obviously have to be taken into consideration. Is a quarterback that they love falling down to them at six? If the answer is yes, they ain't going nowhere. They're taking that quarterback. If the guys they love are not on the board, do they stay and take a receiver or do they trade down if an opportunity becomes available? Now, I always say when you guys write me questions and you say, should the, you know, who should the Giants take at six if so and so and so and so is here? I always say it depends on who's on the board. So let's talk about this for a minute. So let's say, for example, J.J. McCarthy falls to six. I personally think that that's a little high for J.J. McCarthy. I know it looks like the Giants are in love with him. I don't know, um, per se, if that's the guy they're targeting. I happen to think that the Giants are not only looking at you know, the top tier quarterbacks, but also developmental guys, you know, guys that maybe could be had on day two. So, you know, are they going to say to themselves, okay, do we stay at six and get a guy who can help us right away? Um, you know, such as a Roma Dunze or a Malik neighbors, or do they say to themselves, okay, you know what, we're going to trade down, get some more assets so that we can move around if we need to in the, the subsequent rounds and uh, just realize that our biggest positions of need, quarterback, receiver, cornerback, happen to be the deepest positions in the draft. So in my opinion, if the Giants don't have the quarterback that they want, obviously, and I don't know who they want. You know, I don't know if it's, uh, it's going to be Drake May, who I don't think will be there. I don't know if it's going to be Jaden Daniels, who I don't think will be there. J.J. McCarthy might be there. I don't know. It depends on which draft board you believe. Um, so if they don't have the guy there, you know, and, and they say, okay, you know what? Let's trade down a little bit. You know, yeah, it would be nice to have a Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors or even a Marvin Harrison Jr. if one of them should fall. But you got to think that maybe they might be able to get one of those receivers a little later because the, guy, the teams that are drafting after them may not, you know, they, they might not be uh, in a position where they, they want a receiver. Maybe they want an offensive tackle or an edge rusher. So you can't really assume that all, all those receivers are going to be off the board. So 
what I would do if I were the Giants and the opportunity were there and the guy that I wanted wasn't there at six, I would see if Minnesota wanted to trade up. So if Minnesota, who has uh, picks number 11 and 23, were willing to give that to the Giants, I would take that. I think, you know, the Giants, if they took 11 and 23, they could still get themselves a quality wide receiver and they could still get themselves a quarterback all in the first round. And the benefit of that, ladies and gentlemen, is that they would get them in the first round, which means they would have them for five years instead of four, assuming they pick up the option year. To me, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, you're talking, um, you know, is, is that a little too rich for Minnesota to give up in terms of the, the draft uh, value points? Yeah, it is. You're talking 1600 for that first for the sixth overall pick versus uh, 1250, which is what uh, Minnesota has. So I don't believe I could be wrong, but I don't think Minnesota has a second round pick this year. Um, I'm going to double check that real quick, but if they don't, I think that's the way they're going to have to go. Uh, if they want to trade up and it's pretty clear that they do want to trade up and, uh, yo, they do, they, Minnesota does not have a second round pick. They don't have a third round pick either. So they have uh pick number 11, 23 pick one Oh eight in the fourth round, uh, one twenty nine and so forth. So if there is a quarterback that should fall down that doesn't fit what the Giants want, but maybe fits what, what Minnesota wants, I'd look to do it. Now, I, realistically speaking, I think Minnesota is going to try to trade with guy with, with teams above the Giants, you know, maybe Arizona or Los Angeles Chargers. I don't think they're going to go to the Giants per se, but it's something that if the opportunity is there and Joe Shane can pull it off, do it. Don't hesitate. Do it. Because, you know, if you could pick up both of those first round picks, like I said, I believe you could still get a quality receiver and one of those quarterbacks that has um, a fringe first round slash second round grade at maybe 23. So, you know, I've seen draft boards where J.J. McCarthy falls down to, to the 20s. I don't know that he will. I know some of you are saying there's no way he's going to fall down that far. But if he does. And you're sitting there at 23 and, and Minnesota, you know, that's not Minnesota's guy. Why not make the trade? If you can get them the assets, why not do it? But again, it's probably not a realistic scenario. If you're the Vikings and you want to trade up and, and get the best value, you know, I just don't think that they're going to give for two first round picks, realistically speaking, to the Giants. I think if anything, they would do it for the Cardinals, who have, a, I think, are drafting fourth or maybe even the Chargers who are fifth. But hey, listen, we can dream, right? That's what this is all about this time of year, mock drafts and mock draft scenarios. But if the Giants do have that chance to trade down, I think I would I would like to see them do it. As much as I would hate to lose out on a Dunze, you guys know how I feel about that receiver. I think, you know, if, if it meant, like I said, getting the quarterback later on in the in the draft, I could live with that. So, you know, look, we don't always get what we wanted. I mean, back in 2019, I wanted Josh Allen, the pass rusher, and, you know, we didn't get him. So um, you take what, you, what, what, what comes at you, I guess. So, all right, coming up next, I have what I think is the perfect three round mock draft. Um, I did it on Pro Football Focus, the simulator. So what did I come up with? Stick around and I'll tell you. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. Always happy to have you on board, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being a part of my day. Good to see so many of you. And I know a lot of you, you know, watch the uh, the premiere of these shows that I do um, in the chat room. I've been trying to release the podcast a little earlier in the evening so that some of you can gather around. And I see my 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 regulars who are there on the live streams. They come in and they sit and they chat. And some of you will ask for me. And sometimes I'll try and pop in. A lot of times, though, I'm getting content ready for, you know, Giants Country. But I do appreciate it. I hope those of you who partake in those chats have a good old time. And, um, you know, I one of these days I'll just sit through an entire premiere with you. Um, 
but uh, you know, got to get the next stage work ready for everybody. So anyway, perfect three round mock draft. Now I just got through talking about how if the opportunity is there, I would trade down if I were the Giants. Believe it or not, I did try to trade down in this mock draft. The very same scenario that I just described in segment two with the Minnesota Vikings, them sending the Giants both of their first round picks in exchange for pick six, trade wasn't taking. So after trying different combinations and whatnot, I said, you know what? I'm not going to do a trade. I'm just going to stay put. And I'm just going to do best available. And my grades on my three picks were A, A plus, A plus for, to for a final grade of A. So take that for what it's worth. I know it's a simulator. It's not a human grading it. But I think it, it, it was in terms of value. So I went with value picks. I didn't go so much with need. So I went with uh, best available, obviously. I used... Um, I always set my sliders on, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Pro Football Focus's um, mock draft simulator, but I always put the sliders midway at, at the midway point in each category, and I use my own common sense. So that being said, I addressed three glaring needs for the Giants in this three-round mock draft. So who did I pick with pick number one in the first round? Pick number six, actually. You guys know who I pick. Do I have to tell you? Roma Dunze. You know, I love that guy. <laughs> I love the contested catch ability. I love the size. I love the fact that, you know, you get a ball within his, his neighborhood and he's going to come down with it. Now, I don't hate Malik Neighbors as a pick for the Giants at six. I want to make that clear. I know a lot of you are like, what do you have against Malik Neighbors? The answer is nothing. Malik Neighbors is a great yards after the catch guy, um, reliable hands, you know, good size, everything. But I just, I don't know, I just like the contested catch ability because when I look at Adunze, I've, and I've said this before, he is everything they had hoped that Kenny Galladay was going to be, and then some. So I just think that that kid, you know, is going to be something special, at least based on, you know, his college production, his measurables, and and whatnot. So we'll see if that that's how it turns out, but that's clearly my favorite receiver in this draft. So if he's there and the Giants stay at six and they don't get the quarterback they want, if they get a Dunze, you're going to hear me yell wahoo all the way from East Rutherford where we'll be covering the trap. All right. Pick number two. This got an A+. Plus. I would be very surprised if this player is, is there at the sec in the second round. It's possible. Again, it depends on whose board you believe. But I went with J.J. McCarthy at, at in the second round. Again, I don't know that he's going to be there in the second round. You know, not if you believe some of these draft analysts who say that he's his stock is rising. But if he is there and I can get my receiver day one and my quarterback day two first in, in the second round, I think that's a, a home run because you're addressing two major needs um, you're making your wide receiver group that much better. And here's the other th uh, thought process that I had. Wide receiver in the first round is going to be able to help the team right away. Quarterback is not. Quarterback is probably going to sit for a year, whoever the quarterback is, whether it's, you know, Caleb Williams, who I know is going to the Bears, um, you know, regardless, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, whoever it is, that kid is probably going to sit for a year. A receiver is not going to sit for a year. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm pretty sure that a receiver is going to be a day one starter. So that's why I tend to say, you know, realistically speaking, if you were to say to me, put money down, what do you think the Giants are going to do? I think they stay at six. And I think they draft one of those receivers. If Roma Dunze is there, I, I, I just like the guy. I, I just think he's, you know, the better of the receivers. You know, um, I know. The Giants brass was out at the uh, University of Washington, I believe, for their pro day. Everybody's thinking, oh, they're there to see Michael Penix Jr. Probably there to see other guys, too, including the receiver, Roma Dunze, who I don't think worked out in that game. But maybe they still were able to meet with him, sit down with him, you know, talk to him. So even though I don't believe a Dunze worked out uh, at his pro day, the fact that he he's 
in that neighborhood, you know, while the brass is out there, they could still have meetings with him, I believe. So, you know, don't don't think necessarily that it, that the Giants just went out there to check out Michael Penix Jr. That's a mistake a lot of people make. They think that, oh, they're going out there just to see the quarterback. No, they're going out there to see other players as well. Okay, um, so J.J. McCarthy is my, my second round pick. For my third round pick, I went with, um, let me see, Ennis Rakeshaw Jr., cornerback. All right, now, I have spoken many times that um, cornerback is a, is a, is a th problem for the Giants, all right? Uh, Rakeshaw, by the way, is with Missouri. At least I forget. Um, cornerback, the Giants do not have a cornerback two right now. They have tried to get one, have not been able to do so because of free agency. Uh, you know, Tredavious White ended up signing with the Rams for, for, I think, one year, $10 million or something like that, which was too rich for the Giants' taste. So the cornerback market, you know, the veteran cornerback market's kind of drying up a little bit. At this point, you know, you've got a young secondary. I get it. And, you know, you would ideally like some experience back there. But here's the thing, folks. The Giants, in adding Brian Burns, they have now fixed, hopefully, their front seven. So if that front seven can do a little better job at getting to the quarterback, maybe that makes things a little diff uh, easy. Maybe that makes things a little easier for the defensive backs. Maybe just a little bit. Okay. Whereas before when, when the pass rush wasn't getting home, it was, I think there was more stress on the defensive backs and in particular the cornerbacks. So I just feel that, you know, the giants get a solid, you know, cornerback prospect to go along with Cordell flat. Who's more of, you know, I, I think, you know, they want to try Cordell flat in that spot, but I'm not convinced he can hold up. Um, and then, of course, they're going to rotate different guys in the slot. I don't think they're going to go with one specific guy there. You know, the, the thing about this cornerbacks class in the draft is you do have more slot uh, slot quarterbacks than you do outside guys, but it's still deep enough to where you can probably find somebody on day two if you need that. So I went with Ray Shaw Jr. Um, because I, I feel they need him. You know, I, they, they, they need a cornerback. And uh, with the first three picks, and I only did three rounds in this particular mock. I will do a full mock draft for you guys here on the Lockdown Giants podcast, um, probably as we get a little bit closer. But, you know, I addressed three significant needs. And, again, the grade was an A. I know it's a computer-generated grade. But, listen, I've done these mocks before where I've gotten Cs and Ds and whatnot. Um, so I'm just trying to use common sense and logic as to what makes the most sense for the Giants. So that's what I came up with. Agree, disagree, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments section, those of you who watch on YouTube and those of you who listen uh, to the podcast on, on audio, you know how to get in touch with me. It's in the show notes. So, you know, feel free to reach out if you agree or disagree. I'm always interested to see what you guys have to say. So anyway, folks, that'll do it for this edition of the Locked on Giants podcast. Again, I appreciate you spending a little time with me on uh, this Thursday night, if you're watching it on Thursday night or Friday. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. Those of you who are celebrating Easter, happy Easter to you. Um, otherwise, I'll see y'all on Monday with all new episodes of the Lachlan Giants podcast.